Okay, so uh, let's start. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our session. Uh, I am uh, Kenji Kaneshige. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, open source software development team in Fujitsu. And I also working in OpenStack community uh, with you uh, as a board member uh, uh, to expand OpenStack ecosystem. And uh, he is uh, Wolfgang Ries. Hello, good morning. Okay. And uh, Fujitsu is uh, building and offering the digital business platform uh, called MetaArc, uh, which covers both existing business uh, workload, so-called system of record, and the new digital business workload, uh, so-called uh, system of en engagement, on top of OpenStack technology. Uh, today, we'd like to uh, talk about the requirements for enterprise cloud and the challenges we meet in uh, OpenStack from SOR and SOE perspective. And this is the first session of our breakout sessions. So first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce Fujitsu itself briefly. Uh, Fujitsu is Japan's uh, largest IT service provider and number five in the world. Uh, there are about 160,000 Fujitsu people working in more than 100 countries. And Fujitsu has a long history, uh, more than 80 years. Uh, Fujitsu was founded in 1935 as a communication device manufacturer and expanded its business field to computer systems. And now uh, we are providing technology solutions ubiquitous solutions, and device solutions. Uh, those are our principal business areas. Our thought for the future is human-centric. Uh, we think the most critical technology is empowering people to work more creatively. Our human-centric vision is about putting people at the center of everything. In the era of cloud computing, the borders of uh, existing industries are becoming blurred and fluid. Uh, the value will be co-created by suppliers, uh, partners, and customers. We need a comprehensive platform for this. Last year, uh, Fujitsu began providing a digital business platform called MetaArc. It is designed to offer the capabilities of mobile, IoT, data analytics, and AI as a service. Uh, this comprehensive framework has been designed for our customers to enable their digital transformation. MetaArg is not just focusing on grow growing new digital business workloads, so-called uh, system of engagement. Uh, it covers both existing business workloads, so-called system of record, and the new digital business uh, workload. It will allow various applications from various industries to work together and create new barriers. MetaArc is based on scalable cloud infrastructure. Uh, we are providing public cloud service called K5. And we are also providing private cloud solution, uh, PrimeFlex family, based on the same architecture as K5. Fujitsu has chosen OpenStack to be a foundation of this scalable cloud infra infrastructure. The OpenStack ecosystem is growing very fast, and Fujitsu can directly participate in the development through the open community. Uh, those are the major reasons why Fujitsu has chosen OpenStack. Last year, uh, Fujitsu has announced that Fujitsu will migrate all internal systems uh, to a new cloud platform, K5, based on OpenStack within five years. It consists of uh, 640 systems across 13,000 servers globally. In other words, Fujitsu is migrating all internal systems uh, onto OpenStack, and all the Fujitsu employees will work on top of OpenStack. By doing the cloud migration by ourselves, 
uh, we can continuously improve our platform based on our experiences. And we are offering them uh, to the customers. This is our approach. Based on our experiences, uh, we are trying to feed back uh, the requirements for enterprise cloud to OpenStack through the open community. Uh, Fujitsu's activities in OpenStack community is increasing. In fact, uh, we made a top seven code contribution in Newton release. Now, uh, let's take a look at enterprise cloud requirements for a uh, system or record and the challenges in OpenStack. A cloud native application model is growing. But at the same time, uh, we need to support uh, existing business workloads continuously. The goal of computing for ex existing business workload is to maximize the efficiency. Uh, in order to maximize the efficiency by migrating the workload to cloud, uh, we need to continuously provide enough performance, uh, reliability, and serviceability in addition to reducing the cost uh, by automation and consolidation. I'd like to talk the requirements for enterprise cloud uh, from compute, uh, maintenance, and supportability point of view today. The first one is compute. Uh, there are uh, several demands of cloud offering in enterprise systems. The first one is uh, virtual machine on uh, shared server model. That is the uh, most cost effective and it is used for the workloads which don't uh, require severe performance uh, such as web uh, or development systems. The second one is uh, virtual and physical computing environment on dedicated server model. Some enterprise workloads uh, need physical servers, especially to meet performance requirements for such as database uh, and ERP. The additionally, uh, there is also a requirement to separate the workload uh, from the impact by the other users uh, sharing the same cloud system. For this purpose, uh, there is a requirement of running virtual machines on dedicated physical servers. Uh, most of enterprise or mission critical system in production require this model. The last one is dedicated cloud service platform model. Uh, this model provides cloud service platform itself as a cloud service. Uh, users can build their uh, cloud system without having their own data center. Uh, OpenStack has uh, capabilities for virtual on shared server model but it, is still, uh, it still needs some effort to provide virtual and physical on dedicated server model. Uh, today, I'd like to share the requirement in this model. Uh, there are three major requirements in virtual and physical on de dedicated server model. The first requirement is capability to provide uh, various computing environments to uh, workloads. The second requirement is the capability to connect uh, workloads running on various computing environments. And the last requirement is unified operation. The first requirement, uh, various compute, OpenStack has developed on top of virtualization technologies, but enterprise workloads need physical server environment, uh, especially to meet performance requirements and some workload would be migrating to container. So we need to be able to provide a various computing environment, virtual, physical, and container. Uh, OpenStack already has capabilities uh, to provide uh, various computing environments today. Uh, bare metal provisioning by Ironic has uh, been officially supported since Kilo and the container provisioning by Magnum has been officially supported since Liberty. The second requirement, uh, connect workloads. Uh, enterprise system consists of a lot of workloads. Uh, some of them uh, would want uh, virtual machines, uh, and, uh, and the other would need physical, and some would be migrated to container. 
provisioning various computing environment is not enough. Uh, those workloads need to be connected and work together in order to function as a system. Uh, we had a big progress about this in Newton Redis. Uh, tenant networking for bare metal servers is supported in Newton. Uh, thanks to this feature, we are able to connect uh, virtual and physical servers uh, via network, and we can create them for each tenant. The third requirement, uh, unified operation. In order to maximize the efficiency, uh, operation for system, admi system administrators should be as simple as possible. In addition to that, it would be great if we can enjoy all the cloud capabilities, even on physical and container environment, as well as virtual machine environment. For these reasons, uh, users should be able to use and operate the cloud functionalities uh, transparently in every compute environment. Since uh, OpenStack has been developed based on virtual servers, a lot of features are available only for virtual servers and not available for uh, physical servers or containers. One example is Security Group. Security Group was developed on, top, uh, on virtual port concept, and it is widely used in cloud environment. It would be great if we can uh, use this useful feature even on physical servers transparently. And another example is failover. If virtual machine became uh, unavailable uh, for some reason, uh, it would be taken over by evacuation mechanism. If we do it in bare metal, we need uh, additional efforts. Sunboot is one example. Uh, currently, bare metal can only boot from a local storage. So if a user wants to uh, fail over to a new bare metal server, uh, the user has to detach the storage and attach it to the new server by hand. Some build enables the software controlled failover, even on uh, bare metal. Fujitsu will uh, continuously work with OpenStack community uh, to realize the one platform, which allows users to enjoy uh, OpenStack functionalities in every virtual, physical, and container transparently and maximize the efficiency. The next one is maintenance. Uh, since there are a lot of different, uh, different users and workloads uh, working on the cloud, the system failure would have more impact than before. So the maintenance to keep the cloud system healthy uh, becomes more important. When we compare traditional system and cloud system, uh, there are two major differences regarding the system maintenance. The first one is about the type of workload. In the uh, traditional system, the workloads are basically fixed. So the stability of the system is monotonously increased. And once the system gets stabilized in the test phase, uh, users generally don't want to touch their system anymore. On the other hand, the workloads are not fixed in the cloud platform. The users and workloads on cloud are variable. So the stability oscillates when new workloads come. Another difference is about ownership. In the traditional system, the system is owned by a single customer. All the components or workloads are up updated at the same time based on the system lifecycle. The system lifecycle is usually decided based on hardware lifecycle. On the other hand, uh, there are multiple owners on the cloud. There are multiple players running their workloads on the system. Uh, they are not related to each other. And there are uh, also an owner of cloud itself. Each owner has its own system lifecycle, and it is no longer possible to align all of the, those life cycles for system maintenance. So because of those characteristics, 
the importance of non-stop maintenance uh, becomes much higher on the cloud rather than a traditional system. Uh, workloads are variable in cloud systems, so we need to update the system continuously and proactively. And there are multiple owners in cloud system, so it is no longer possible to have maintenance period. Non-stop maintenance is essential in enterprise cloud. Uh, OpenStack already has the capability of updating or applying a fix uh, with no downtime. But OpenStack still needs some more efforts to realize non-stop upgrade. So uh, cloud providers need a special aid outside OpenStack for this. However, uh, non-stop upgrade is a common requirement for enterprise, so it should be provided as uh, OpenStack standard feature. Fujitsu would like to work with OpenStack community to realize this requirement. The last one is supportability. Uh, in traditional enterprise system, it is required to identify the root cause of any issues in order not to cause the same problem again. This requirement doesn't change even in the cloud system. But troubleshooting in OpenStack is not so easy, as you know. One major reason is OpenStack has a distributed architecture. To achieve the reliable root cause analysis in the distributed OpenStack architecture, uh, logging is the first target work to work on. There are three points here. Uh, the first one is we need sufficient log information in each component. For example, uh, when we encounter the network trouble, uh, we usually try to identify how far the packet arrives. It is a time-consuming job. Fujitsu is now working with community to add uh, packet logging at security group and firewall. These efforts will make the job much easier. Anyway, the first thing uh, to do is enrich log information. And the second is uh, we need unified log format. For example, uh, to know how the request was processed in the entire system, uh, request identifier identify uh, across uh, uh, components is necessary. And uh, when we analyze the log information using software, uh, we need standard log header across components. The last one is we need to uh, integrate log information uh, distributed in different nodes and analyze them. Fujitsu is working in Monasca project to achieve this and offering a solution based on Monasca. Uh, we will uh, discuss it later in our presentation. Working. So. so first of all, ah, I think my mic is on, so you can hear me. Thank you, Kenji. Um, so first of all, let's, uh, let's do a quick poll. Who of you knows about the Monasca project? Can you just? Okay, so it's actually, okay, that's, that's uh, in a way good. So please stop me if I'm repeating stuff that everyone knows already. Um, the, um, what my, my part in this presentation is to tell you a little bit about the um, project contributions that Fujitsu is doing, or we are saying for the systems of engagement. We're not really religious about this distinction between systems of record and systems of engagement, but it's a, it's a useful paradigm to distinguish a little bit, as you know, between the stuff that is in the uh, long-term databases and that con con constitutes the, uh, let's say, stable knowledge of an enterprise as opposed to the systems of engagement, which are your interactions with your customers, which are your data visualization and data collection apps. And so the requirements <coughs> for that, of course, can be a bit diff different. Uh, not so much on the monitoring part, though, uh, and that's why um, it's maybe a good idea to start with the discussion about Monasca. Um, but as an overview for what I'm going to talk about now, um, you can see here a little bit 
where we trying to add um, value to the OpenStack project in Fujitsu. We're focusing on basically the area of cloud management. Um, at previous conferences, you could see that we also, or we are, we are still contributing also to the container orchestration area of work. So we are contributors to the Kubernetes project. Um, at this point in time, we probably will not focus on bringing out uh, our own project in this area. That's a little bit why this uh, area is shaded in gray. Um, but our main focus is on um, things like the self-service portal. So making um, applications easily consumable. Uh, you'll see more about that in a moment, about the um, cloud monitoring based on Monasca, right? And we'll start with that because it's the, it's the bridge between the SOR and SOE topic. And the third thing that we've gone into recently is uh, to support uh, users of hybrid clouds in uh, managing the cost of their hybrid clouds, right? So um, more and more you can see that um, using various cr clouds, it can become quite challenging to keep a tab on where do the costs come from, which projects generate them, uh, how are they going to develop into the future, um, what would happen if I move a workload from one cloud to the other, and all these kind of things we address with, um, with a solution that's called uh, Cloud Service Pico. So, um, after this overview, let's start with the Monasca. So Monasca is uh, the uh, OpenStack Big Ten project. Cloud Monitoring Manager, or CMM, is our Fujitsu version. So it's the basis for our Monasca is, uh, is the project that's a basis for our Cloud Monitoring Manager. We, our contributions are mainly in the area of log management and then complex event processing. Um, and we are also official core reviewer. If you are interested to learn more about the details of Monasca, there is a Monasca bootcamp this evening at five o'clock, um, where our, we, we're doing this together with HP and others, and our guys are going to be there, and you can um, also get some nice giveaway that contains all the information that you need about Monasca. Um, yeah, you have the list of, of main contributors here. Um, but since many of you are already uh, have had contact with Monasca, I think we don't really need to talk too much about the uh, general stuff. Um, but um, yeah, so the why, why or what is what is really the the. Um, um, reason why we need a special version of monitoring in OpenStack, right? I mean, there's so many open source um, monitoring projects available already today. And um, so there's basically two, two reasons why uh, Monasca is important for the OpenStack community. The one thing is that OpenStack systems are built to scale, so you need a monitoring system that's also able to scale along. Yeah, that's really from the beginning built to be able to scale. Um, um, otherwise, the, um, the, the storage and processing of large amounts of data eventually is not going to work. And the second thing is that um, you need a cost-efficient way to also handle it for um, tenant users, for multiple tenants. And, uh, um, and I'll show a little bit more in the coming slides what that really means. Um, so, um, first of all, okay, generally speaking, Monasca is uh, the turnkey solution in OpenStack configure, uh, configured to collect and present all important management data. If you go to our booth, our Fujitsu booth, you can see, for example, that um, we deploy, we use a catalog to deploy an application onto Monasca, uh, sorry, onto OpenStack virtual machines or also onto containers running uh, on OpenStack. And the monitoring part is simply integrated in that deployment. So when you deploy the application automatically, um, your monitoring gets um, deployed along with it. And um, so um, 
while other things like um, uh, sort of what kind of alarms and uh, notifications you can get may be, may be the same for other uh, open source monitoring projects. This part of it being built into the open stack, being native to open stack is something that's very um, specific to the Monasca project. Um, of course, it has uh, the po possibility of, um, well, uh, and, and this is the log management is now the part that Fujitsu has been working on and has been contributing to the Monasca project, the collection and management of logs. Uh, for services, middleware, and operating systems um, using base technologies that are relatively well known, especially since we saw that there's uh, many people here in the room who know about the Monasca project. We don't have to say so much about that. Um, the, the important thing now is, as I tried to say in, uh, before, is how it's integrated into OpenStack. Yeah? Um, so, it's basically monitoring as a service. It um, has um, full support for, for a tenant model. And um, the, um, and, and the possibility to monitor these VMs is basically configurationless, right? So it's, uh, you deploy a VM with the, um, and uh, you immediately can see it or can, can get the monitoring data in, um, in the dashboard. Um, so, okay, yeah. The, so because it's a cloud offering, um, it's, uh, it's, it's ready to use, um, it's out of the box. Of course, it's an open source project. I think in this context, it's nothing special. Um, and it's, um, and, and, and in the distribution that we provide as Fujitsu, it also has enterprise-grade support. So, um, now, I think I owe you some explanation about how the, um, how we achieve this, uh, this scalability. And um, the, um, in the, um, if you look at how, for example, systems like Zabbix do the scalability, um, when, you, when you grow your application, eventually will uh, get to a point where you have too many users on, uh, on one Zabbix server, so basically you just have to create a separate a server and separate island, and then that island will uh, manage a separate project. And um, the, um, it will not be possible for users from one project to use, uh, to view data from another project. So what that means is that you cannot have um, users uh, monitoring applications in different projects. Um, you have the situation that maybe the, the way that an operator monitors your applications looks different from the way that the user monitors this application. And here in Monasca, uh, it, actually, everything goes through the same um, dashboard, through the same function, monitoring functionality, which means that the operator, of course, has more functionality than a normal, than a normal user, but he, sees, he has the same um, dashboard environment, the same look and feel, um, and um, that, of course, makes it easier when, you have, when we are in a systems of engagement development where sometimes in a, in a DevOps environment there is a, the borders between the guys doing the, the development and the operations are not so clear anymore, right? So, um, and the second thing is that when um, we, um, when the number of projects is growing, um, you simply don't need to, eventually, you, you don't need to build new environments, uh, sorry, no, new islands when the, when the number of projects becomes too big. So cloud native scalability is the important part here. So if you, uh, we have, as I said, we have the Monasca Bootcamp. Uh, you can see at our booth, we can also, we have experts about the product who can show you 
more details. Sorry, this is moving ahead on its own. The second part that I wanted to focus on a little bit is um, a project that Fujitsu, it's a Fujitsu own project that we put open source a year ago um, in October last year. It's the Open Service Catalog Manager. This project is um, intended to drive enterprise use of consumption-based IT. So that's really what uh, systems of engagement is all about, right? You want to, um, you want to make it as easy as possible for uh, your app users to consume those cloud-based services. Um, most of the work, we are actually also working with the Cloud Native Foundation here to um, test uh, our uh, open source project here, our open service catalog manager with the goals of the Cloud Native Foundation. Most of, of the work today in Cloud Native um, applications is focusing on making easy execution environments, easy um, development environments, um, pass environments. Not so much thought is being put into, at the end of the day, how will people be able to consume these um, applications in a user-friendly way? Yeah? And what we have built is um, software that's already tried and true in various SaaS and infrastructure as a service environments that effectively is a service catalog, or it looks like a web shop. You could, you could think of it as a web shop for, as a service environment, and it does a various a number of things. So for the users, it basically, you can see here, looks like a like, um, um, web shop for software, enables the users to obtain and launch those resources with one click and a self-service mode. So really intuitive, few parameters. Still, it can be configured to have whatever complexity do you need for a specific system. It's OpenStack compatible, by the way, certified as OpenStack compatible. If you use the software inside a corporation, it allows you, and some, this is actually one of the important use cases of the software, to set up and manage a business-friendly catalog for any type of cloud service, no matter whether it's infrastructure as a service, platform or software as a service. And um, often it's also used by service providers. So companies who have a software and they want to bring it out in a software as a service mode. Yeah? Um, for example, one of our customers using it to provide multi, um, services for their multi-function service printers, right? And actually distribute them over resellers. So, you can quickly define cloud services. You can assign pricing plans to it. And of course, also change them very flexibly when the market changes. And you can also um, service um, reseller models with this software. You can see here a, a list of this is more, this, this slide here is more centered on the infrastructure as a service part because in the, let's say, last two years, most of the use cases have been about how to um, provision infrastructure as a service templates in corporate environments using this software. And you can see that, of course, we support OpenStack, we support Amazon, TPS5, VMware, Azure. We also support our own Fujitsu public cloud, obviously, TPS5 and K5. Um, so, and, uh, well, the different uh, you can see that in every case, every use case, we've been addressing slightly different versions of the API of that, um, of that a, uh, as a service system, depending on the specific customer use cases that we had. So, yeah, okay, um, before moving ahead too quickly here. So this is um, an open source project, openservicecatalogmanager.org. If you go there, you can actually, you can download it, you can find Docker image, you can find the GitHub, you can find 
a virtual experience center to try the system out. You can find a community to join and ask questions. Um, and uh, recently at the LinuxCon, we also, in Berlin, we also started to, with a um, developer workshop, um, because in terms of external contributions so far, the contributions have been mostly coming from different areas within Fujitsu, but now we are also moving ahead to um, attract external contributors to this project. Okay, then um, in terms of, well, what is Fujitsu contributing to open source? I still have like a few minutes, right? Um, the, um, we also do work, as I said at the beginning, on container or orchestration. We are, um, but again, not, um, this is a little bit under the hood because we contribute to the Kubernetes project. We don't build our own project, um, product based on that. Um, so as many others, we think that it's important for the industry to have this enterprise ready uh, Kubernetes, easy to deploy, um, um, pre-integrated and seamless integration into OpenStack. And actually at our booth, we show, we show you a demo where we use the Open Service Catalog Manager to provision uh, both a VM-based application, we use WordPress in this case, and a container-based application, uh, which goes onto a Kubernetes cluster. And um, in both cases, you can see how we also deploy the Monasca monitoring along with it. Yeah, so going back to this uh, initial picture that you showed, I showed you where we're trying to simplify the um, the cloud services management above, um, above the existing OpenStack um, technology, making that easier to consume, easier to manage for the, uh, for the end user. And um, maybe this, uh, by the way, this um, one container-based application that we show you at our booth is also, I didn't put it into this uh, presentation here because it's not an open source contribution from Fujitsu at this point in time, but it's, it's a quite interesting application to do multi-cloud financial management, okay? Checking um, how your different costs from different clouds come in, structuring them, um, analyzing them according to projects, doing forecast, and also doing what-if analysis. Okay. So, um, just finally, uh, about where can you find our contributions. Okay, Monasca, that's clear. I mean, it's the, our contributions are um, in the official scope of the Monasca project. And for the Open Service Catalog Manager, as I said, we, so far we have created our own open source project. We're still thinking about where we can position it inside Linux Foundation. Um, OpenStack Foundation may be, but it's not really uh, limited to OpenStack, so you could see before it's addressing a broad range of uh, hybrid cloud solutions. Um, so for the moment being, it's standalone, but we have uh, Apache 2.0 based CCLA, so if someone wants to contribute, you're invited. If you just want to use it, go to openservicecatalog.manager.org. You can see all the use cases, you can see um, the documentation, you can download the code. Um, and if you have challenges or problems trying it out, you have a really good forum. We'll be very careful to see who has questions and we'll be back to you very quickly if, uh, if, you, uh, if you find challenges. So please talk to us if you're interested. Thank you for your attention. Can, can you, ah, okay, now you can hear. So any, any uh, questions about? Doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, maybe you have some in private that you want to address to us after the presentation, so please feel free. Thank you.